get my six. Guys, today you're going to get kind of like a hodgepodge with this video. Um, bits and pieces of me doing various things around the homestead at different places, different parts throughout the day. Made over a period of several hours. Um, this way we get various views of various locations and I'm going to show you some of the various projects I'm working on. And I'm making it slowly but surely because every single muscle in my body is sore right now. And it feels good. You see these uh, trees behind me? This was yesterday's project. It took me about two and a half hours of nonstop work to do it. Um, I'm putting in more like privacy hedges, more tree lines going up along a portion of our property we've never hedged. Uh, yesterday, I went up into the meadows and dug up nine six feet tall eastern red cedars. Hauled them all down here, made several trips doing it with the little lawn tractor I have and the trailer I pull behind it. Planted nine. I need one more to block out uh, what I'm blocking out. And it's it's nothing visual per se, and it's nothing uh, of sound. It's energy waves. And this kind of goes along with a story that I in, kind of intentionally left out of my new anthology, October Nights, 31 Tales for the Halloween Season because it sounded so ludicrous, but let me tell you guys, it's real. You might not be able to see energy, but it can see you. And if it's negative, you need to block it. So, um, just show you some of my work here from yesterday. It's here at the edge of the pond. Don't worry, I'm not blocking my view of my pond. Just the upper portion of it here, which is all just kind of weedy and everything anyway. But uh, we're gonna go on up past our wood pile with this, uh, slowly but surely through the fall, because I've got so many other things to do. But let me go set the camera up where we can see the meadow where I'm going to get my next tree. I need one more. I, th I thought I had enough, but I need one more actually down here. We're going to give you a different view from a different angle. And hopefully there's been these beautiful little yellow American gold finches flying through the meadows all morning feeding on thistle seed. Hopefully we can get some of that. We can see if we can capture him, her, it, or they viewing me taking up my next cedar tree. And I'm going to talk to you about the story that was left out of October nights. Keep getting my six. All right, so I've identified, uh, oh, and if you're curious about my shirt, cause you're like, what? This is a shirt I got in a 5K road race last fall. Peace on earth begins at home. 5K run for shelter is in Charlottesville. It benefits the shelter for help in emergency. Uh, I think they deal mostly with uh, battered women and children. So, peace on earth does begin at home. It begins with your family and it begins with your neighbors. And it begins with what may or may not live on your land. Um, but here's the deal, guys. So, we've identified the, the next cedar tree we're taking up here. I'm going to go dig it up here in a minute. But here's the thing. Um, people often comment. They say, you know, you should go to the courthouse and do a, a deed search to find who lived there before. And talk to the old woman, you know, that used to own the place before you find out what happened there. These are all good ways to uh, find out some history of your place. A lot of folks had said, you know, find some old timers, talk to them. That's always a way too. But you know what I've found to be the best way to find out not specifically what happened in an area or, you know, on your land at some point in the past is to listen to the land. I know that sounds crazy to a lot of folks. Uh, very few of us are empaths and can just sense energy that other people would, they'd say all this stuff is hogwash. But I tell you guys, you got to be careful because, uh, even though, like I said earlier, even though you can't see the energy fields, they can see you and they will latch on. And, uh, you know, if we think in terms of poltergeist type activity, angry spirits uh, who linger because of traumatic events that took them to the other side and they don't want to cross over. There's good and there's bad energy fields out here. If you have the ability to spot them, sometimes you can just feel them. Maybe there's times there's parts of your property where you go 
and you just feel good when you're there. And then there's other parts of your property where you just feel creepy. Well, there's a reason for it. Learn to listen to it. And we've done that. And so there's this one portion over here where there's a very powerfully negative force. Now, it's not a powerful force because uh, this force doesn't really do much, but it's powerfully negative. Um, we're, we're blocking the negative, the, the negativity waves with trees, with um, another privacy hedge, more trees going to plant a pretty a detailed little mini forest back here and put some, you know, eight feet tree guard, uh, deer guard uh, fencing around it so that the, everything has a chance to grow. But it's very important to only focus on the good. You know, somebody left a comment. I you guys leave wonderful comments, but he was mentioning something about, uh, don't even, he said, stop addressing the negative. Like, uh, the people that judge you for doing what you enjoy, uh, people pointing out, I need to hide my gray hair. You know, somebody, this is the last time. Okay. Cause I'm taking this guy's advice. Somebody commented, they've been watching me for a long time, but there's too many ads in my videos now and they're considering unsubscribing. Um, please do. We'll be okay. I think our other 217,100 subscribers are going to carry us through uh, losing you. So if you feel that way, just go ahead and do it. There's no need to let us know because we don't care. You're not that important. So, but what I just did, the guy said I need to stop doing that because by even acknowledging the negativity, you are affected by that. And I do agree with him, but I've just historically always been a smart ass and I had to say that. I'll let it go and try not to do that anymore. I'm going to go up here and get my tree because, guys, listen, let's say you're out. And if there's just some place you just don't even like looking at, every time you look at it, it makes you sick in your stomach, block its view. You, you can't absorb these things, okay? Um, so that's what we're working on now. And we got to get some more tree guards up. And it's going to end up being an hour long video if I don't just work more and talk less. So let's get to it. While I'm up here getting my, my last cedar tree for this portion of the, of the privacy hedge, you continue to watch the tree line, get my six, look for those little yellow American gold finches and anything else we may or may not see back here. Oh, are we still recording? That was interesting. There hasn't been as much as a breeze out here today. I just said all this. I mentioned the negative, the area where there's a very powerfully negative source emanating that, and we're blocking it. And this wind that just swept up and blew the camera off of the, 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 the setup I had it on is coming from exactly the point of negativity that we're blocking. How many times has this happened? You guys have been watching these videos. When we go live, we'll get a clear signal until we start talking about him, her, it, or they. And then the signal starts going in and out. It buffers. And sometimes, you know, the live stream just stops. That's what I'm talking about, guys. You might want to say this is hogwash and this isn't real. But whether you believe in the energy fields and whether you can see them or not, they believe in you and they can see you. They know what's, what, what you know. Creepy, huh? All right, let's try this again. Maybe I should lie to it and say I'm digging up this tree to put somewhere else. Well, okay, I'm gonna go out here and dig up this tree uh, to put somewhere else. Huh, the wind stopped.
What a beaut. <sighs> I'm 5'10", so that one's about six feet tall. The thing about Eastern red cedars, they are, you know, they're evergreens and you can safely transfer them pretty much all times of the year because you dig the entire root ball up. You go out to the what's called the drip line, the end of the branches where the water drips down after a rain and that's pretty much as far as the roots extend. They just get thicker and bushier over time. Dig up the whole root ball, keep the dirt on it. It's not exposed to the sun. And today, by the way, we're about six calendar days away from it officially being fall as of this recording. And uh, it feels like fall today though. There's no heat, no humidity. I'm not uncomfortable at all in long sleeves. And actually when you're working with cedars, this helps. So I did, I did nine of these yesterday. That's why every muscle in my body is sore. <clears throat> But again, I love it. You know what it feels like? It feels like honesty. My body's telling me that yesterday it pretty much did everything I called upon it to do and pretty much everything it could do. And the reward for that, not just a new beautiful tree line down here, but also one of the best night sleeps I've had in a long time because I was just simply exhausted. So let's go get this thing in the ground and then see what else we can get done today after that. Okay, here's a very, I remember this quote. We got this off of one of our followers years ago when we were planting our man-made forest down there by the road. I forget who said it, but she said, if you're gonna plant a $20 tree, make sure to dig a $40 hole. And uh, there's so much truth to that, guys. A lot of the trees that we originally transferred or planted that didn't make it was because we simply didn't dig the hole good enough. You know, you gotta make it considerably wider than the, uh, and the root ball and even after that you got to go deeper and dig and loosen the soil so that when those roots start to grow they're not going up against rock hard you know it's the end of summer now the soil would be rock hard they'd have a hard time penetrating new soil to be able to really take hold so you really got to even once you've got your hole big enough make it a little bit bigger and loosen all the soil at the bottom of the hole it'll really help the roots out Perfect. Perfect. Edge it over just a bit that way, which we'll do. Some of the soil we dug up. So this is a homesteading channel. So I'm going to point out a couple more keys here about when you're planting trees, if you want to increase your, their chances of survival. Never plant the tree deeper. And yeah, I'm shaking. <laughs> you just saw the work I did. Never plant the trunk deeper than it already was when you dug it up or when you took it out of a pot. If you 
about the plant from a nursery. If you bury it deeper, you might naturally tend to think it's going to have more stability. What it's going to do is suffer trunk rot or root rot. And now you see, I made the ground level all around the tree, just like it was before I dug the hole. And we have a lot of excess dirt left. A lot of folks will have the natural tendency to just want to pile that excess dirt up around the trunk of the tree. You'll get the same problem, trunk rot, root rot. So I'm going to put it on my little sled back here and just dump it over in the forest. So we now have this portion of our new tree line used to, to block out emanating, em, em, guys, ugh. it's hard work. Okay, negative wave energy is coming from that direction over there. We'll now be blocked with these trees. And now uh, we're gonna finish the, the rest of the forest up there later in the fall. But for now, let me get this dirt out of the way and then we're gonna go start working on another project, let you get my six and uh, see if we may or may not see anything in the background of that one. Get my six. All right, guys. Huh, we're at a completely different part of the property now. We're down by the road, our man-made forest. Give you a view. Hundreds of trees we planted here when we first got here. You know what, guys? I'm going to spread some positive news with you here. You know, I've mentioned so many times about annoying neighbors down here. That guy over there coming over and lecturing when we first got here because he used to take hay off of here and then someone else criticizing always being critical why are you doing it that way there's so many easier ways to do it food's cheap <sighs> there's been so many times i've been down here working on this man-made forest when people have stopped and i've said oh gosh here it comes again another narcissist to compliment me on what we've done with this property there's an old man lives up the road and uh, he told me where he lived, and, and funny, when I went by his place, guess what? Surprise, surprise, he gets out and does a lot of landscaping too, and his place looks gorgeous as well. Um, what, about a year ago, this woman stopped by, and she got out, and she was carrying papers and stuff. I'm like, oh, should be interesting. Well, what it was, she was an appraiser, and she had just appraised a house on up the road from us a little ways and she saw me out and she wanted to stop because she ha has been noticing that she's been through the area over the last four or five years since we bought the place all the improvements and she said do you have any idea how much value you've probably added to this property just from what you've done out here and i'm like no and and she said i can give you a rough estimate for free and not because i'm interested in, in trying to get you to do a refi or sell your home it's just i don't think you understand what you've done i'm like well I, I love doing it i love planting the trees i said this is a fruit orchard and she's like those are fruit trees so yeah so i spent like 30 minutes taking her around showing her the gardening gardening spots um pointed out the campground we didn't go all the way up there showed her all the trees the various fruit trees the holly trees behind us here she said that it wouldn't be ludicrous to to estimate that we've increased the value of this property by a hundred thousand dollars just from all these trees we put in I was like, wow, that's pretty neat. And I said, so basically you're telling me by me getting out here and doing all this stuff as like a hobby and because I love doing it, I think it looks good. I've kind of saved $100,000. And she said, well, that's another way to look at it. She said, you probably saved $50,000. You've done $50,000 worth of landscaping here yourself. But you know, when you make improvements on homes and properties, the value actually increases at a greater rate than the cost, in case you didn't know that. So cars coming by, you might hear it. You might hear a few cars, but let me get right to it here. And the point of that is, you know, there, there's always more positive than there is negative. It's just sometimes those negative fields are so powerful, they can attach themselves to you. And that's why we just put in that tree line and why we're going to do some more up there to block out some very powerful negative energy, powerfully negative energy. It's not a powerful energy source, but it's powerfully negative and we're just blocking it out. So as you can see in the truck, if you can see it up there, I've got a ton of fencing, ton of wire because I, last week I spent about two and a half hours weeding my Virginia burning bushes here, which would be twice as big and, and robust as they are now, or three times as much if I would have put guards around them and kept the deer off of them. Let me tell you, you get a plant and like these Virginia burning bushes, it says deer resistant. I found that to be a lie. They were supposed to be deer resistant. The Leland cypresses were supposed to be deer resistant. Guys, our deer eat everything and we've got so many deer here. So I'm getting the guards up around them before the bucks go into rut this fall so they don't mark their territory by rubbing antlers on them. Keeping our herd of free range doe we've got that does this big loop around here two or three times a day from eating more of the, the flowers. And I've got the camera posi posi positioned 
here for a reason. I know I'm going to be at a distance doing the work, but you see that light in the clearing? Okay, just to my left over this way, heading toward the truck, that's where that, that cemetery is in there where there are five people buried. Okay, so in case you missed it, this spring we had something amazing happen with these Virginia burning bushes. Five of them didn't make it through last winter or whatever. So I went through when everything was turning green and I saw that we needed five more Virginia burning bushes. I thought, well, I got to buy these because I can't just, you know, dig them up from the woods. But at that graveyard, uh, I found five Virginia burning bushes. And guys, I walk my property almost daily. I have uh, since I bought it four years, four years ago this month. I notice any little subtle change. I see desirable trees, bushes, plants that if I want to transfer somewhere else, I do. In almost four years, I never noticed those burning bushes there. I don't think they were there. So anyway, let's talk more work. Enjoy watching me do some fencing, get my six and guys, here's some advice. One of the, the most common injuries with farming, ranching, homesteading, and even just people doing gardening around the yard, people live in subdivisions, is a result of uh, eye injuries due to fencing. If you're gonna use any sort of wiring or fencing, wear eye protection. This stuff can snap at a, at, without any sort of notice. Or, that guy needs a muffler. Um, tell you, it's not worth losing an eye. All right, let's talk more work. Got a couple guards already made from uh, protecting plants previously elsewhere. They'll fit. It's going to be big enough for that one. Saves me a little bit of work.
All right. Here's the first one. You don't see the edge of it. It's gonna start with, I had more wiring left than I thought. I'm gonna have to buy some, but not as much as I thought, but we're definitely gonna have all these things caged in before the, the bucks go into rut here in about another two months. We got two months, plenty of time, but two months will sneak up on you quick. Can't lollygag. So we're gonna make sure we are measured to the right width, diameter, whatever you want. All right. <clears throat> Keep watching my six back there. I have paid no attention to the tree lines. So if anyone or anything has creeped up on us, you've got to do the timestamps because I can't see it. Remember, when I start paying attention to them, they stop paying so much attention to me. It's part of the strategy. It's not about some dude out in his yard doing yard work. About what may or may not be watching and observing some dude out in his yard doing yard work. Some can be seen, some cannot. Some people have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and others do not. That's why a lot of times people say, gosh, I go to where everybody's time stamping it and I can't see anything. What's going on? Well, you just gotta believe. In the things unseen Only then you achieve Every dream you can dream Wow, I just wrote the beginning of the song. I need to go get my guitar. Oh wait, him, her, it, or they, or an invisible entity snapped one of the strings. I need to have it restrung. And I need to write that, no? Mama deer and baby deer. You're not getting any more leaves off of this Virginia burning bush. Uh. All right, let's see that. How would you, how would we do this? How would we do there, hmm? Gosh, this is gonna be a long video, isn't it? Wow, I'm getting ready to wrap it up and just very distinctly heard a growl. There's what I just did. And I moved that intentionally, not just to show you my work, but I heard a growl back there. Rewind and listen, see if you caught it too. So guys, thanks for being here with me for a maybe, I mean, uneventful video. I don't know, maybe you guys saw something. I'm gonna have to go back and watch myself. Right there, do six. Um, we got some work done. I'm just getting started up here, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording now. So I can just focus on this exclusively so I can wrap it up quicker and uh, go inside and get some lunch. So. Remember guys, focus on the positive. I'm gonna to try to do it more here, which we do mostly, just every now and then one of these negative Nellies will get to me. But uh, we're gonna avoid focusing on that so much. Um, and some of these new hedges are gonna help just from blocking negative waves coming from negative places. I tell you, I'm an empath, guys, and I suck it up like a battery. That's why I spend so much time alone. And if you're an empath, you you know exactly what I'm saying. So, uh, let's just truck go by. UPS. Eh, I was hoping I'd get my print copy of October Nights, 31 Tales for the Halloween season today, but I guess not. Maybe tomorrow. So uh, those books, by the way, are available by uh, in print or Kindle. Links in the description box below. My wife's YouTube channel link is in the description box below. Um, thanks. For I just heard a very distant scream. Thanks for being here for another episode of the PBS. S. The potential Bigfoot Sasquatch. Show.